Hello everyone, I'm Brahm Mithra. Welcome to a, another Let's Talk Kingdom Death video. <laughs> uh, this one's a little bit different. Normally, for my Let's Talk series, I always do, I pick a topic and then I focus on that topic and I talk about it. Most recently it's been the uh, Dark Heralds and things like that, but in the past it's been uh, each of the expansions, you know, Wave 4, Gambler's Chest, like that. It's, it was one topic. However, for this one, uh, there was a comment that was in one of my videos. <laughs> it's quite the uh, occurrence, but it happens to deal with someone who just got into playing Kingdom Death, and they came across the randomness that is uh, Kingdom Death Monster, <laughs> um, and it can be very rough. So let me just quickly go through this comment. Uh, first, as you can see, they just got into playing. <laughs> they lost to the Butcher, which is normal. You, people lose to the Butcher usually the first time they ever fight it, so they lost four survivors there. Then right after the Butcher, you add Hands of Heat <laughs> to the timeline. Uh, I have my own issues with Hands of Heat. Uh, it, it's going to be a rough event. Hands of Heat is not great. I, I don't really like Hands of Heat. As, uh, it can be good. It's bad, too. But uh, And then Bone Witch was added to the timeline because of it. And Bone Witch is another just oof. Bone Witch. <laughs> then the Settlement Event uh, deck happened to just give Skull Eater, which would then add Murder to the next Lantern Year. Then as you progress through the game, an Armored Strangers was added. Armored Strangers, the Kingsman intro event. Um, that intro event, you can roll and lose four, or f you can lose five survivors. That uh, event, I've also had issues with that event because with that event specifically, you could just resist the Kingsman and lose four survivors. Just if you didn't even want to fight, you could just resist the Kingsman, send four people out, and not even fight it and lose only four. I don't know why that event gives minus five. It's really weird. It can only be used if you really want to farm like endeavors or abuse graves. But it's a very weird. If you're not doing that, why is it minus five? I have no idea. So I have my issues with armored strangers. <laughs> uh, then, because of those minus five. Keeping you know the natural balance of whatever your population is, you want to do a balance of male to female. Then he drew strangers in the dark, <laughs> which rolled the result from the settlement event. Again, this is just examples of top decking just from that settlement event, which would force all men to stay back. So then after losing all these massive amounts of survivors, you would then need to send all females out. If you lose again, they're now losing all females, which could instantly wipe your settlement because now you have no females left, which in this case happened. And then upon returning, after losing those four females and everything, you draw murders on the timeline. Again, you could just then lose your final female. <laughs> uh, so that th th this this comment is is insane, right? This that that is a that is a lot of randomness to have to deal with. Uh, all at once, and I feel so bad. So, it sparked the discussion with, you know, it's it's a, it brought up the discussion topic of how much luck and bad draws and top decking and bad rolling should be in a game before the game becomes just not fun. And um, I've talked about all these things. You can see, if you just watch me play, I talk about all the gotcha moments. I talk about all these things if you watch my uh, Let's Plays. Now, um, there was mention in this comment about one of my videos when I streamed, and I had the same exact thing, where I, I posted the video, it's called, like, an example of bad luck. You should watch that video if you want to see me just having a rough time. I had a murder event, it, it's just, it's nuts. That was a bad, that was just a series of just rolling ones. I rolled, like, five in a row, it was really bad, and then I drew murder. <laughs> so it can happen. And my opinion on it is, I mean, obviously I enjoy Kingdom Death, I would say it's it's well worth it for the story, but me just saying it alone felt like, you know, I should get other opinions, outside opinions on this. I can, I'm in a unique position where I can offer multitude of or mu multiple opinions. So I reached out to many of the other people within the Kingdom Death community and asked them, uh, I sent them the comment, I sent them some topics I wanted to highlight, mainly being, was the game designed to be like this? Uh, do you feel that top decking should be top decking and gotcha moments? Should those be in the game? Uh, how do you feel about blind playthroughs or first time playthroughs like this person was experienced? This is their first time playing. Uh, so I posed all these questions and I sent them this comment. 
And I got a lot of responses, and I'm so honored that people wanted to be in this video and, and be part of it. Um, so I'm just going to cut my intro short, and most of this video is just going to be the Kingdom Death community talking about this. Now, how I did it was... I uh, talk mainly over Discord, and everybody who's in this, and some extras, uh, either I'll link to their YouTube channels in the description, and all their uh, other things, all their homebrew projects and all those things. Uh, but these people are very active in Lantern's Reign, very active in the Kingdom Death community, parts of Community Edition, active on YouTube, all these things. So um, let's just, I'm just going to pass it off to them, and then I'll come back at the very end. Hello, my name is Wayforger. I'm a member of the Lanterns Rain Discord, and I'm also a member of the Community Edition team for Kingdom of Death, a uh, community-run uh, initiative to rebalance existing elements in Kingdom of Death Monster to allow players more options and uh, more variety without underma undermining the game's core design. Hey, I'm Chaos Fars here. I've uh, been doing Kingdom Death design for quite a little while and commenting on it. Primarily worked on creating the Harvester Worm expansion, which it contains a, a fancy nemesis monster and a five-year campaign and a bunch of craftable gear. Hi, I'm Jay Richter. I did Drifter Knight. I helped a good bit on Wandering Watcher, a little bit on early game gear, and did various things. Hey, I'm Slay. Um, you can find me on Lantern Drain, but most of my time, is spent actually on the CCG server where I help play tests primarily. I haven't designed any thing of my own, but I have read and played the game quite a lot. And I will say that I've spent a lot of time analyzing affinities and gear and trying to help balance the gear. Um, you can also find me on Lantern Rain where I usually hang out in the homebrew channel to help provide feedback for community edition team. I do help play test some of their stuff and I like what they're doing, and I'm hoping I can help provide my knowledge to them. Alrighty, hello. I am uh, TennisDude9993, uh, also known as Nines, uh, one of the admins of the uh, unofficial Kingdom Death Discord, Lantern's Reign, and I guess uh, Kingdom Death enthusiast, and a little bit of a game design enthusiast. Hello, Kingdom Death Monster community. My name is Corey, and this is my wife, Andrea. And we are with Hit Points Gaming. Uh, I've actually completed two, three full campaigns of Kingdom Death Monster. And, and two, two halves. halves. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, I actually started back in 2015. Um, it was actually the first really series that I've done on my, uh, on my channel. And it kind of grew slightly from there. Um, I just had a lot of fun playing this game. And felt like just wanted to put it out there in the community because I had no one else to really play it with. At that point, no. Right. You did not. Uh, and then after I, I played my first campaign, then I brought my, my buddy Chris or, or Snots into that campaign. Then after that, um, he couldn't play as much because I think he just had a young child. Mm -hmm. I think during that campaign I saw, saw how difficult it was and I just wanted to keep playing with all the new expansions. So I pitched the game to you. Do you have any idea how I got you to play? I think you probably told me I can name all the characters. Yes. Yes. That I... sounds like something that would entice me um, into a an unknown. Yeah. Um, I I remember. I think. I we guess were, we were building IKEA furniture one day, and I think this is actually when I when I first purchased it and I was waiting for it to come in and I was sitting there talking to you trying to explain the game to you about I don't building the mo fighting the monsters crafting all these items and you did not care then when eventually I played the the first few um, series I took the character approach where yes you can build your own character what names do you want oh we can get different items and gear and I think that's how I got you you can have babies and and um, you can name the settlement and the first, the first game is really short. Yeah, it's really the prologue. short. The prologue. It's not going to take too long. And it, well, that 
and naming were probably really the only two things. Yeah, I don't think I went into the difficulty of the game. No, um, I didn't think you need to. I remember Snots being here and playing mm -hmm. the games and all of the moans and groans and and um, I, I, I think I might have known at that time how difficult oh, right. it would have been. But you wanted to give it a shot. I appreciate that. Because I didn't think we would get through the whole campaign. It could end at any time. So That was another. <laughs> we might just go a few years and it will be over. That's how we started the second and the third campaigns that we still yeah. haven't completed. Yeah. We could just all die at any time. And then that's it. You won't have to play anymore. So that's how I got you in. And we are definitely appreciative of being a part of this video and going through the difficulty of Kingdom Death Monster. Um, we are just some people that enjoyed the game. I know there's a lot of people in the Kingdom Death Monster community that's also a part of this, which is very exciting. And um, humbling. Humbling. Yes. So thanks a lot, and uh, let's get to the first question. Do you feel that Poots intended to design the game to be as difficult as it is? Yes. Of course. Of course he did. Hmm. Uh, I, do you differ? Do um, you feel differently? Well, no, I, I guess I do agree with you. I believe he sat down and, first of all, I think he wanted to design a really good game um, that had, this sounds silly, you know, I think he went in saying, oh, I want to design this game, a boss fighting game with multiple phases, and, oh, by the way, Poots, I've reached out multiple times. Don't talk to me about him. Yeah, do multiple times. I, I wanted to pick his brain from the beginning. I haven't heard from him. It's because I'm a Kingdom Death Monster sidekick. That's why. Yeah, we're not we're not well known in the community. I guess you you no, are stop it. You are Kingdom Death Monster. No, Me, I'm absolutely just a not. Okay, stop that. So Poots, I'm still waiting so we can talk and discuss. And maybe I can answer Call you. Us. Ask you this question, but uh, yes, I think it's difficult. But I don't think that was his mindset when he created the game. I think he wanted to create a game with multiple phases, this boss uh, encounter mode, um, the hunt phase, all this with randomness. And yeah, challenging. I think people want to design a game when they sit down. They want to make a game, you know. Well, I don't think... Who wants to design an easy game? Some people out there. Some people like to play easy games. So that's the target market. I want to make a game easy for people to come well, and enjoy. Well, I don't know. That's not an acceptable in our household. <laughs> <laughs> easy, yeah. easy games. So I guess that does make sense. But um, I don't think we would purchase a game because it was easy, I think we would purchase a game because it was difficult. I think Kingdom Death's innate challenge is, very, is innate to the game's identity overall. Uh, this is a tabletop experience where players are meant to overcome difficult circumstances and survive a nightmarish world. Uh, it's fair to say that this challenge was purposeful. It was necessary to um, creating the sort of experience that uh, was originally envisioned for the game. Uh, building a fragile civilization of survivors within this bizarre and harrowing universe just isn't an easy task. And that sort of unforgiving game design and difficulty um, are, are, certainly pro uh, are certainly aspects that were meant to be presented in the way that they are. So gotcha moments and aspects of luck do... Um, enter the the gameplay loop as a as a means of added excitement having the the choice to overcome this um overcome the various challenges and challenges in the game uh in a satisfying manner uh, really allows the game to be highly replayable and enjoyable once i complete a game i'm not going to play it again especially if it's easy yeah. why would i want to play it again if i already know how to win there's no to me, there's no game in that. There's fun. Sure. Sure. That one time, but I'm not going to keep go going back to it because there's so many other games. I'm going to give a, a very characteristic answer for me and kind of say uh, yes and no. Overall, I'm not sure the game of Kingdom Death Monster is overly hard because your base goal is really just survive. But if you can kill a level one white lion reliably, get uh, a little bit of spare population, be able to lose to nemesis fights and still continue your settlements, you can go to almost the end. 
And there aren't any other really mechanics that are about survival. Kingdom Death isn't a lot about survival. It's more about the loop of kill a bigger thing, take its stuff to make fun new gear, and then go kill a bigger thing. And that loop actually is difficult. Fighting new showdowns, fighting higher level monsters is tactical and deep and generally pretty difficult. You know, each fight truly is like a boss fight. And I do think they are intended to be that way. You know, no monster is, is meant to be forgettable. They're all meant to be kind of dangerous and fun and interesting. I think and I truly believe in my heart that Poots wanted to make a trial and error type game because he really likes Dark Souls and Monster Hunter. There's a lot of things that you just need to ram your face into until it clicks. Kingsman is a great example. It's one, you have to know that you want to keep your population low. Two, you have to know, probably better to just throw survivors at them. It's, you have to find things out over the course of multiple playthroughs. I truly believe that is design intent because he his whole thing with strains and replay value and, and legacy mechanics. Poots basically built a giant emergent storytelling generator, and a lot of it involves people dying. There is a fair amount of randomness, especially with the events. Sometimes things are good stories, and unfortunately sometimes results in really bad player experiences. I'd personally say that it's difficult, but not it's not a healthy kind of difficulty, if you ask me, because it's mostly knowledge-based. If you know certain things are coming, you can avoid them, and that dramatically eases the game, and a lot of it is based on surprises, if you ask me. I think I agree with Chaos for the most part. Like you said, emergent storytelling. I do think that the difficulty is not actually part of the game's design, as per se, but a side effect of how brutal the world that Poots designed. Like, the world of Kingdom Death is designed to be brutal. And I think as a side effect, he made and designed all the monsters to be difficult, to kind of convey that feeling some of the difficulty maybe most of the difficulty is from the randomness but there are ways to mitigate the randomness and i think the real difficulty for me some of the choices that you make in that game are hard and some of them will lead to you dying that is also where the most fun most of the fun of kdm is for me personally during the showdown some choices that you make are very hard that is where the difficulty is for me but does it become a problem if it's too difficult does it become a problem if it's too difficult? Uh, well, for me, yes, because I don't have the type of mind that um, analyzes the situation until I come up with a different solution. You, however, like, I think you like to analyze games hmm. and tough games to try to figure out the answer. Um, so I don't, for me, yes, it would be a problem if it became too difficult because I just wouldn't want to play it anymore. Um, but for you, I think it's the opposite. You would want to play it. That's so fun. So yes, I, I do agree with you. As I was going through these questions, though, I was thinking the opposite. Well, no, not the opposite. Mm, man, this is tough. I guess we'll unpack this, like I said, as we go forward. But you're right. I do like hard games. I like to analyze to try to... Um, obviously solve them, it becomes a challenge to, to overcome. You like to problem solve, and being creative in your problem solving is, I think, what draws you. You know, maybe there's not one route to winning. You like that. You like to come up with and see mm -hmm. okay. all of the different routes that you could go, and I think that is what entices you to a game, and I think that that is um, a you know, some of Kingdom Death. And why Adam... So I guess after all this, this is why he created the game. Not to be challenging, but to allow people to think through the process of how to um, achieve victory. I would say that that's after a good amount of experience. And once you mitigate a lot of the other luck, I think where the difficulty comes in, which is good, and the, probably the most interesting kind of difficulty is making decisions and evaluating them during the showdown phase. But there are a number of cases where you just bring the wrong piece of gear or you make the wrong long-term decision and you don't know what the consequences are until you get slapped in the face and someone dies. That's the kind of thing which makes a game a little unapproachable, I think. Yeah, in terms of approachability, I agree that... It is hard getting the game depending on the kind of player you are. The game does rely on experience and playing it multiple times to die over and over again. And as we all know, the game is very long, 30 year campaign, that's like maybe 30 weeks 
for some players, that's going to be too much time investment to stick it out. So yeah, I completely agree with that. The the issue with trial and error gameplay with Kingdom Death is kind of it's a game that takes a long time for one. So getting to the same event multiple times can be months, literally months. Uh, and two is direct bad luck. You can just never, ever hit a monster because you can just roll a bunch of ones. There's no skill if you can't roll good dice. There's sort of planning and strategy and that sort of thing. But if you just have sh like like bad luck, like I do, it's a failure to translate a feeling like Dark Souls and Monster Hunter into a different medium. Does the medium Adam Poots chose, in this case being a board game, present restrictions on how to limit randomization? While the random elements that are embedded into the various phases of Monsters gameplay can be frustrating, they still do lend themselves to the game's replayability. Bad things are going to happen to survivors of the settlement throughout, the, throughout a campaign, and these moments are meant to drive the uh, campaign story uh, forward whether that results in a game over or not ultimately comes down to how you how the players react while safeguards against random or luck based moments uh, exist it would be nice to you know perhaps see video game design or, or gaming design where you're able to uh, feel like th there's more fairness there though how that would be um, utilized I'm not entirely sure you know, that you've got all of the hunt events, I mean, uh, settlement events. Some of them are ridiculous, like murder. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me about murder. Yeah, and I think, actually, you're right. When we do our, our game, every time we shuffle that deck, we just try to avoid murder. Because we've played it, I think, in maybe my first or second campaign. We pulled it, and it's, like, wiped me out. I remember. We had it, too. Yeah, We had it, it too, in our horrible. full one. It's horrible. So... Is there a restriction because it's a board game that, um, like, does it hurt the randomness because it's a board game? And I would say no. I think it's intentional that it's just in there from the start, okay? That's what Poots just designed it to be, this random game where anything can happen, kind of like in life. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, wow. Just in life, it's, it's random. You can't predict or you can't put up these major safeguards. Because I think you can do that in a board game. I think you could have a um, either a sealed envelope or um, events that become unlocked as you get to, okay, now that you're in year eight, add these um, cards mm. to the settlement event. I think there's ways to easily do it. Just like in the rule book or the the campaign book, as you go through multiple years, there are timed events that happen. Some are good, some are bad, but they don't happen right in year one, they happen in year 10, it's an actual event. I think he could have done something very similar with the cards as well. So I don't think he's being held back because of the design, it's just, that's not what he intended, right? It sounds good to me. It's it's a weird love hate relationship because I actually really really like murder as a as an event. You don't really lose anything because survivors are very expendable even if they're super built up. If you know how to play the game, and again that that takes multiple playthroughs, you can have you can build another really strong survivor. And with murder, you can game murder to make really strong survivors. But then there's cracks in the ground. The cracks in the ground is awful design. Because it, you lose gear, and gear in Kingdom Death is basically leveling up. Gear is the cornerstone of your settlement. Mostly, the development and success of your settlement is on gear. Anything that's just, haha, your trash crown is gone, that's crap. The mechanics of the game are really far from horror. Um, because a key component of horror is disempowerment of the player. And King of Death is the exact opposite. It's all about empowerment. It's about killing big things and making cool new gear to kill even bigger things. It's meant to be, you know, emotional storytelling, but some of the things will shaft you, like if you just roll them really early, like murder or plague. I think there are ways that definitely 
this could have been designed better, 100%. Like, simple things like adding text that say, if this was drawn before Lantern Year 5 or something, reshuffle the deck, draw another card, or you don't reshuffle the deck when you draw settlement event cards, so you see everything in the settlement event. And this will prevent, you know, double murder, but you could still get things like plague and then murder. But I do think this could have been designed better, and I don't know why it wasn't. People, many people already implement house rules for this game whether they remove certain settlement events or a certain gear from the game entirely or limit the amount of it can be limit the amount of times it can be drawn it's all done to keep the game fun and to keep the game moving some of the or a decent part of the entertainment of monster comes from the way it's able to punish you and the challenges that it uh, sets you up against certain losses are much harder to come back from than others i'd say it's such a long game you should prioritize playing it for fun over following the rules yeah, this is a game that advertises itself as being about very tactical showdowns. So losing, potentially losing your campaign purely due to random events outside of the showdowns feels terrible. Avoiding reshuffling the deck is a very common house rule with settlement events, and that is kind of a unique board gamey. That's a thing that you can do with the board game implementation to balance out the uh, distribution of cards, a substantial margin, I think. Expected luck over the course of campaign is about even, as opposed to you could get really big spikes one way or the other. To keep track of things that have occurred to help um, to help steer so, us into events and, like I said, randomness. Hey, because we have only four characters alive, the murder event will never come out until you have eight people alive and there's that behind the scenes thinking that's done in a video game or an app to kind of mitigate that oh instead it's just in a deck of cards that you could pull well then if that's what you want just buy a video game this is to me this is a unique experience and if you if you don't want to if you don't want it to be well, to me, I think it's incredibly random. I, I don't think that mm -hmm. being a mm -hmm. board game limits that at all. But again, I've never played an open world video game where, like, what you're talking about. You want to go play one? No, we have a two-year-old. Um, so I guess I still really just don't understand. No, I don't think it, there's... To me, this is so random that I pray that we don't roll, what, 10? Is it event 10? I don't think anybody's going to argue that Harvester is a poorly designed event. I'm not going to defend Harvester because there's nothing you can get out of it. I think there should always be a silver lining or at least something like, okay, well, this guy is has got King's Curse now, but blah, blah, blah. There should always be a give and take with any kind of design. Harvester is 100% bad. There's nothing you can gain from Harvester. It is pointless. It is filler. It is just rocks fall, you die. Uh, with getting a Twilight Sword, that can super duper mess up uh, a build or a character or something you're doing. But you can build around that because a twilight sword goes really, really hard if you invest in a decent survivor. Get them. What I really like doing is getting a, a twilight sword ma uh, specialist and getting them a, a cycloid armor, and just they go to town, do a crap ton of wounds. Um, so I think people underrate the twilight sword, but that is a specific example. Things that are random gotcha moments need to have some kind of upside or silver lining or something along those lines. I don't think it's meant for players to never bring instruments out. Yes, it, out of 100 uh, hunt events, Harvest Storm is just one. So there are pretty low chances of just rolling into it several times during any given hunt. But the fear of that being there, I think, adds to uh, the overall mystique of the hunt phase. The only change I would have thought at that point would be for all survivors to spend all of their survival if they have enough to to be able to uh, get away from the worm or to be able to throw their in instruments away to um, allow themselves to continue the hunt rather than it be a really like a uh, defining moment of that session whenever it comes up. 
Uh, yeah, that part, that I think uh, definitely is intended by Adam to uh, be reminiscent of the old school, you know, uh, Warhammer quest, I think, that the hunt phase is ripped out almost completely of. Um, and those old kind, old school kind of things definitely were quote unquote difficult in that it's like, oh, hey, yeah, uh, you roll the one, you die now. Uh, and it's very punishing. Uh, Harvester is a good example. It's certainly not good design because it you, you don't want to scare players away from your first experience. And it's the kind of thing that once you know about it, you just play around it. I have to imagine that Boots and the playtesting team don't play around something like the Harvester. And they just every now and then someone dies during the hunt phase and like, oh, hey, that's a cool moment. Um, but that's just not how that's not how people work. Oh, that's an important difference, I guess. What Chaos mentioned, for the most part, I agree with. Some of the gotchas are worse than others. The ones that suck a lot are ones that will ruin your survivors, the ones that you worked very hard on. Ones that occur during the hunt phase, because losing a survivor in the hunt phase is a huge detriment to the showdown. You're pretty much going to have a very, very hard time winning the showdown, depending on who you lose. This will, I hope, be rectified with scouts in the future. These discussion points directly relate to future content and everyone made some speculations about future content and how they'll relate to these topics. I think Poots is aware of the fact that there's so much, uh, that there's probably a large outcry against events like this, and he could work to add either uh, gear or armor that allows you to uh, maneuver the hunt phase and get around the Harvester Worm event. Uh, I don't think that he's going to make any over, uh, large overarching changes to that uh, aspect of the hunt phase's design, though, especially not for like the core game at this time. If we were to get more hunt events, uh, there could be some sort of ar errata there, but I think we will probably see either some sort of gear survivor ability, perhaps, uh, appear that allows us to more reliably bring instruments out on the hunt, or more reliably get around that hunt event if it is rolled. Perhaps it allows you to re-roll, and if you uh, re-roll that same, the Harvester Worm event again, oh well, but you have to keep that new roll. Something of that like would be probably the most feasible answer. And we'll have to see if it ends up doing that, but uh, I think the chest is absolutely 100 million percent a response to a lot of things. Maybe not wrong, it's the, the wrong word about it, but um, a lot of kind of minor issues or bigger issues about the core game. And uh, I think they're, they're very targeted. You can see these like exact, like Scout very clearly is a response to the idea of there's maybe a bit too much variance in the hunt phase and in settlement stuff. How should we address that? Well, hey, add a, add a Scout. Add um, another way for players to directly interact with these phases that before they were only interacting with very you know minimally and hey collective cognition the problem players don't want to hunt higher level monsters enough how do we address that well collective cognition does that you are directly rewarding players for hunting both higher level stuff and also more very wider variety of things to to get all that sweet cc points and then also again that issue of hey players aren't hunting higher level stuff is also addressed with the Crimson Croc, because the Crimson Croc has a set of resources that only drop if you hunt a level 3. Well, hey, there's a reason to hunt a level 3 of Node 1 Quart, and uh, to keep on going even more, because it is like almost every system in the chest very clearly addressing things about the core game. Philosophy, they're addressing survivor progression is kind of limited and bland, and also it's very personal, which is kind of against one of the, the design cores of Kingdom Death, which is, hey, it's about the settlement, not the survivor. Because how they're they're set to work is that as survivors gain more knowledge through their fi uh, their philosophies, those knowledges are added to the settlement's collective communal knowledge deck, so that other survivors can learn those and grow stronger as well. I think that Gambler's Chest will be a lot more mechanics driven rather than dice driven. Direct example: the scouts have an item that let you kill the scout instead of somebody who died. That is a mechanical fix for Harvester. That is a mechanical fix for cracks in the ground. That is a mechanical fix for uh, murder. It, it's it's just a band. It's a band aid, but it works. I think there's gonna be a lot of mechanics in the chest that will mitigate the issues of the base game. There's a new Phoenix intro. The Phoenix intro sucks, so they made a new one. I think that the the hitty, the disguise kit. I think that's what that item is called. Is an indicator that there will be more mechanical solutions for randomness and i would look at it as more of a progressive next step 
I don't think he has any regrets in making it the way it was. Looking at it as a from a game designer's perspective and wanting people who play your game to uh, experience that same challenge, but not uh, be faced with such a, a discouraging sort of um, eventuality. He's taking the steps then to add more intricate systems to allow your settlement to deal with these challenges in their own individual way because uh, you, can, you might not have innovated or the uh, you might not have uh, just gotten a, dis a disguise kit for that hunt you might still have your scout but their gear grid could be different and you could still suffer the effects of the harvest or worm if you're not prepared i think that it is um, sort of building upon that uh, philosophy of uh, giving the player options to allow them to tackle the challenges at their own pace with what they have at their disposal. What might be going on through Puta's mind or whatnot, it just especially with something like the Harvester, if you have noisy gear, you die instantly. There's nothing you can do about it. It's such an incredibly dangerous creature. It does make it feel dangerous, the Harvester entity, or the Sunstalker like destroying all final bull gear. It's <laughs> It's flavorful. He sets everything on fire, but it's also um, it's emphasizing like the monster's power as opposed to like improving the player experience, which is not really good for the player experience. You know, in the future, scouts being able to look ahead to see what's coming up, or maybe like a soothsayer of some sort to like predict what kind of settlement event will be coming up in the next couple of years. But you know, for now, the randomness is, you know. I don't think it's a constraint of board game. Hidden information versus known information. Hidden information being something that a player has no way of knowing about until they experience it. Known information would be once you have experienced it, you now can just avoid it and create just dead content. Something you're no longer going to ever want to do because you know it can be a trap or a gotcha moment. Poots tried to make a trial and error game because he really likes Dark Souls and Monster Hunter. The gameplay loop in Death is pretty much identical to Monster Hunter. Everything is 100%. You just need to learn pattern. You need to know what this event does. You need to know what's coming next. And that can only happen through repeated grind. That is the sort of uh, atmosphere that is trying to be made by Kingdom Death. And it's the issue with that is that it takes forever. A lot of monsters are really slow to fight. Only fast to fight monster I can think of is Sunstalker. I can knock out a Sunstalker super quick. And it's like a glass cannon type deal. Those are fights I really like. When it's either you kill them super fast or they kill you super fast. You're not wasting time. I absolutely love the hidden, hidden information. And this is what got me attracted to the game from the very beginning. And why I do like fighting a new boss. Uh, yes, wow. it's scary, of course, when we, um, again, when we're recording, when we're doing a playthrough, uh, fighting a boss the first time. You don't know what their hit reactions are going to, hit locations are going to be, their hit reactions, who we should bring out to the fight. Because we actually don't cheat. He won't let me. Yeah. I'm the type of person that wants to read, you know, the little caption at the bottom of the episode before the episode starts. Yeah, he nope. he won't let me do that. So you can imagine with Kingdom Death, I'm not to I'm not allowed to look. I mean, it's not like I would understand the cards <laughs> even if I did look at the, at them, but you know, I like to look at the hit locations. Um and the criticals, nope, not allowed. No, so we no. keep everything legitimately hidden until that first time that we record. And yes. I don't know if we've ever... Well, I, I know this. I've never played Kingdom Death Monster for fun. No, for fun. No, I mean, <laughs> we're not recording. We're always oh, yeah, recording. Never we're just... never just playing a campaign without yeah. a camera. So everything has always been hidden from me, other than maybe Snot's telling me that this game is incredibly hard and you could somebody could be killed at any point. Okay. So everything is hidden. I think you're absolutely right there. Let me take it a little bit further. <laughs> okay. The first time that we play it, correct, I don't look. After that first encounter, or uh, when we're trying to 
craft something and I've done the campaign before. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Then I want to look ahead and say, okay, in order to get this item, I'm going to need to make sure that we do this event at this time. So let's start building this here. Okay, in that sense, especially for a long campaign, again, I keep saying this, because we're recording, we want the campaign to continue, I will start mapping that out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But when it's a new event, when it's a new boss fight for the first time, go in blind, that's the most fun, that's the best part about this game. Adapting to misfortune is an integral aspect of just this gaming experience. You adapt as the more you learn, and even as like a veteran player, I'm still learning things about monsters and how to like take advantage of them or how to better prepare myself for their different traits or in their different attacks. I think it's it's a constant learning experience. So the emergent sort of aspects to monster and the different campaigns within monster are equally important within my mind they both sort of have their place within the game when i first started i wasn't truly aware of how gear grid use was or and how being able to manipulate ai and hit, uh, hit locations were great keys to uh, successful hunts uh, that would uh, allow me to tackle greater challenges and the higher level monsters within the game or legendary monsters uh, navigating that unknown and learning from each of my failures was worthwhile. And uh, I was willing, as many other players are willing, to go along with this game on the journey that, and the story that it's trying to tell. Yes, it, it stinks to have uh, you know, a, a hunt event occur that you weren't previously prepared for. You might make the wrong decision, but that just adds to uh, you know, a moment of learning. Okay, I mean, I think a blind playthrough has some amount of magic to it, discovering the systems and figuring out what's the, what's good, what's bad, what works, what doesn't, who lives, who dies, getting your first stories and whatnot. It's all, it's all really cool, but the gotcha moments are really, they do really hurt that first time experience. And, I mean, actually, I once upon a time wrote a utility that tried to mention a bunch of the gotcha moments and just the gotchas, so that first time settlements would have would be less likely to just walk into obvious traps and die or well i mean they're obvious this, the first time you see them i think now i would almost encourage for a blind playthrough that if you run into something like if you run into one of these gotcha moments where if you had known about this you would have like planned it differently and i'd say just redraw that once and keep playing i think that's better than trying to learn a large amount of a game in advance or asking for lots of advice. It's part of the whole, like, you, you, you want to make sure that you're having a fun experience and that, you know, four survivors don't die during the hunt phase or whatever. Yes, I do think the gotchas are a very bad design. They, they just suck out the fun in the game when they wipe out, like, important survivors, especially when in this game, losing a showdown is a big deal since you're on a time limit. You don't get any like compensation prize for losing the showdown. You're just losing resources and you're losing four survivors, which is a big hit to your settlement, especially when, when you're on a time limit. I do think it's a bad design. I, I, I do think it is bad design because of it limiting gear to just never bring instruments. That is very bad design. Everything comes back to the idea that Poots wants to, people to play the game over and over and over again which is fine. You want replay value and you want people to keep playing your game and keep playing the content that's already there while you're working on new content. I, that's reasonable. Like, I'm in a very weird and unique position to where I can sit down on a Friday and prank out six lantern years just lightning fast because I kind of know what I'm doing. New people, it can be a slog with a lot of fights. And that, that comes down to certain fight designs like Kingsman. King's Curse would be less painful if the Kingsman fight was also less painful. It's a lot of inner working parts that create a gotcha moment, and it's just a, a trickling effect. So it's it's a hard thing to balance, because on one hand, you, you definitely do want some, because you want players to be, you know, intrigued by you know all these choices that are going to make and all these mysterious things are happening you don't want that all to be 100 percent transparent from the start because a little bit of that mystery that wondering is is satisfying it's spicy but the issue definitely rises when these kind of gotcha moments are too extreme 
because then they start to punish players who uh, want to be a little more exploratory or risky or kind of do different things because they might stumble upon one of these big gotcha moments and they get punished for trying to do interesting or different things. And that doesn't feel great all the time. Like Kingsman, obviously a great example. You kill it, you're also happy, and you're like, hey, what's this King's curse? And then you realize that the survivor who killed the Kingsman is basically dead. And that's not super interesting. Uh, the, the, and the, gob, the goblin in uh, the goblin constellation in People of the Stars is one of the most egregious examples, especially because it's not easy to get a goblin survivor. And the requirements for uh, that constellation are pretty rigorous. And to just be revealed with, oh, hey, uh, you died after doing this really hard thing. Not super fun. What unfortunately happens with both the hand and the Kingsman is there is a, la- a lack of reward to uh, meet the challenges necessary for you to kind of overcome that the monsters. Because even if you know this, the tricks to both of them, each of the showdowns are still a, a hard-fought battle that uh, any sort of group of survivors, uh, depending on the nemesis level, is going to uh, p- perhaps have a, quite a, a, ch- a challenge with. You might, you might lose one or two or have a full TPK a- occur. But as it, as it stands, the King's Curse doesn't have en- enough to it to make uh, your, uh, have a survivor uh, who goes through it be a worthwhile occurrence it's more of like a uh i have to deal with this sort of thing rather than it opens up a a different sort of path for the survivor who has been cursed or with the hand it's oh man i don't we we, it feels like we are kind of shoehorned into defending ourselves through this challenge and if we were to try and attack uh it's so slow going that it 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 could very well result in a tpk as well that's where i wish more thought towards like how the showdown is uh, adequately rewarding the survivors who are uh, actively partaking and engaging with it rather than either trying to turtle uh, their way through it or not even engage with it because so, so many people just replace the Kingsman at, with this, at this point with Slenderman because they just don't want to deal with him. Silent him, once you get to the level 2 Kingsman, is hugely frustrating to deal with. Players aren't, don't want to bash their heads against the ground to get through something. It's it, the the challenge. There is it's it was it's more challenging or frustratingly challenging than it is rewarding in that sense. Variance creates it, the variance does help with creating new stories. So that it, there is a there is value to that. Um, it gives you new challenges that you have to sort through. The decks of random AI cards and the fact that you only see certain subsets gives you a different experience, even if you fight the same monster multiple times. The randomness adds to replayability, I guess, would be the biggest point. That's a good reason to have it. If better designed, it the highs and lows could be like reined in a little bit, maybe, or certainly at least the lows. Even though with all of the randomness or whatnot, the things that kill our good survivors, um, we still found a way to push forward and keep going, which I think is a big part of Kingdom Death's like narrative or emergent kind of like the gameplay narrative it wants to tell that it that to struggle in the face of absolutely impossible odds to an extent i think you shouldn't be dejected if a strong survivor dies but you should also build up a hunting party or two you need to focus on six to eight survivors but you can't give up if one of them dies a a thing i love to do in all of my settlements this is an example is I really like the Twilight Sword. Even the vanilla Twilight Sword, not even getting into the amazingness that is Wandering Watcher's whole system there. But even with the vanilla Twilight Sword, I will go for the family innovation and then build up like a lineage of Twilight Sword survivors and pass on that um, uh, Twilight Sword proficiency through a generational thing. So building a story and having fun with it and role-playing I think it's something that not enough people do. I think there's a lot of early design stuff in Kingdom Death, especially in the core game, that they were making, you know, right at the start, before they had really figured out uh, a lot of what they wanted the identity of the game to be, before they refined a lot of it. And so I think some of that kind of roughness shows through. I think uh, definitely there is some uh, intention to make things punishing and hard, uh, I think a lot of it has been kind of just them kind of designing core first, 
and them learning a lot through that process. But they obviously aren't able to apply what they learned designing all the core and stuff to the core. They already designed it. Complete side note. Oh, boy. Well, not side note. Let's only... Right, how you, you like to look at cards, and then you read the bottom and see, ooh, what, what, what is that? What, mm -hmm. What's going to be mm -hmm. the thing? And I think sometimes even when we play, if you're making the decisions of a hunt, and the text is on the oh, card. Oh, yeah, you got, if you it, would watch us, you've seen The text is I on the card. Read ahead. Read ahead. <laughs> and, again, it's kind of tough because if you have to make a decision, do you want to do this or that, and it's right there on the bottom, it's hard not to look. And sometimes it's like, mm -mm. You don't, you don't want to do that. It's tough in games because it's right there. It kind of allows you. Does Poot in, Poots intend us to look at that? No, he wants us to make well, a choice. Well, oh, there's you, ways around it. Well, yeah, you just put a card. And here it goes back to <coughs> the media. Is it because it's on the card it's printed? Okay. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. So well, to me, that uh, is a limitation because if it was in a video game and I yeah. just choose and you got the two options there... You don't get to see what happens. Ah, so, so for me, I'm horrible at jumping the gun. So this is this ahead. is where I, I like to look at. This is what I was mentioning before. You know, I try my best, or really, not try my best, I don't really go on the forums to look up strategies on how to be bosses. I like going in there the first time or kind of deciding for myself, or really the best is, Asking the community after a video, what do you think I should do? What's going to be the strategy here? And that's how I've gotten a lot of feedback, and I, I've spoken to, to many people. I, I think, you know, even Bra has, has commented and given me pointers on videos on what we should be doing. Uh, I've never gone to the forums. I've never joined the Discord to say, hey, you know, what, what should we be doing here? I like that experience of figuring it out myself or, or trying. Well, that's what just, yeah, that's, that's you. You're a puzzle solver. You're a I might not be the best, but I, I, I want to go in and that, that, that's why, that, again, another thing that intrigues me about this game. But really where I was going for this, and again, if anyone has watched our, our videos or games, we, we go on these tangents, and I'm sorry, kind of all over the place. Madara. Oh, God. A great game that I really love, and there's one thing that I think they do the absolute best, and it is that... Wait, let me think about this. The story. What about it? Um, well, it is well, um. Not really the story, but the story is good. It has to do with the rule book or the campaign book. Oh, is it? Does it jump around in Madara? Oh, is it on the next page? That you can't see it. It's hidden behind that red text. Oh, right. Where you right. need to have that viewfinder. Yes, to I've, look at I've it. forgotten about my dog. That is really, really great. So then I know, hey, they don't want me to know the outcome of this. Or the outcome of my decision shouldn't impact... Well, the outcome shouldn't impact my decision. If it's all on the card, does Poots intend me to do that? Should I know what my outcome's going to be? Because the game's so hard, here's my way of knowing... Do you want to do this or that? Knowing what our chance is going to be, going back to hitting information and, and, and known information, do I want to take my chances because I could get something really good? Or just, you got to make a decision without knowing anything. So in Madar, mm. they put that red text there, so I physically know. They don't intend me to know what, this, you know, what my outcome is going to be, and I get to just make it there. And I think that is something that I really enjoy and it can be done still using the same media. Thoughts about how the settlement event deck mostly boils down to top decking, and maybe some fights you could end up in a position where all you do is top deck and hope to survive. I don't know what top gunning means. <laughs> no, it's not top gunning. Oh. It's top decking. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, top decking is just taking the top card of the deck and pulling it, and that's what happens. Depending on how much time you want to invest into this game, the randomness will kill off the enjoyment for most of the part. Depending on if you pull into like murder and cracks in the ground or plague early, that can just wipe out your settlement. It can be frustrating. I actually don't think it's a major problem. I think that it's definitely a little rough of an uh, implementation wise in Kingdom Death because uh, you can just get, you know, pounded into dust. And variance is a problem in both ways. It's both a problem if you have 
uh, a settlement and some players who are really struggling and they just never catch a break. But it's also really boring when everything just goes way too well. Like sometimes I've just had survivors who have just gotten extremely lucky with hunt events and they just become huge powerhouses with all these extra stat bonuses. And that actually is one of my least favorite things in the game because I have this hugely powerful survivor that trivializes a lot of challenge I throw at them. And if ever that survivor dies, I get to feel like I'm losing that huge powerhouse and that doesn't feel good either. So I definitely like Kingdom Death definitely would benefit if it could have a bit of that, you know, adaptal, adaptive uh, randomness or things like that, you know, help out the struggling settlements, make sure the ones that are charging through everything, getting really good luck, you know, get a little bit of harder stuff. I think overall the, the top decking and variance is fine and even like kind of part of what makes it fun. You know, there's you see all the, the memes and jokes about XCOM about, oh, my soldier missed the 95% shot. And, you know, the mission went to hell after that. And too much of that is frustrating, but a little of that is spicy. It's memorable and it's fun, especially when you get the, the opposite. You know, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have not made that shot, but I made that shot. And, hey, that shot was a crit and that let me win the mission. That's also memorable and fun. So you definitely do want some of this top decking, some of this variance because it leads to these extremes which are both memorable and fun and good in a small enough moderation. A bit too much. Um, Phoenix also has a, another uh, another famous card that can just decide to kill you. And yeah, the, the, the Lion God's example of Earthquake is pretty egregious, especially because I would say an insta-kill AI card might even be fine if players have real ways to kind of address or mitigate or plan for that. Especially with a Node 4 quarry. A Node 4 quarry should be capable of doing very unfair things because, well, we'll have to see when Node 4s will be introduced regularly because, you know, Lion God is introduced at year 12, but the King is another Node 4 that's introduced at year 21. But I think it's fair that these monsters have really, really unfair tricks because players should have their own sack of unfair tricks and they should be bringing their A game. You know, they know these fights are going to be hard. But they need ways to address and combat that. Is there, is there ways to mitigate that? Yeah, we talked about the rawhide headband doing the circlet. There's ways to go about that. Um, some people like it. Some people don't. Um, we, we just mentioned this. It's really up to your approach. Are you going to bring items to help you kind of mitigate that? Um, to search yeah. to search through, to know what's ahead? Or are you just going to jump right in? Um, I, I, I'm absolutely okay with it, but I know that there are people that uh, absolutely hate it. Oh, um, well, then this isn't the game for them. I think that for new players, there could be, there is a design space open for bookmarks, different cards, or additions that would allow that, uh, there to be just that little less variance to uh, make the first few steps into Kingdom Death that much easier for for be it like one to five lantern years or whatever, just to allow players to have that time to grow and to gain a better understanding of the game where it's like, okay, now I see that the cat eye circlet is something that I really need to have because of how important hit, lo hit location manipulation is. But just as that stuff would be nice to have, as with like a, a speed run of any sort of like game like Dark Souls or that, it's like it's not entirely necessary. There are a lot of people who forego using the Cat Eye Circlet or Wisdom Potion just so that they can have that blind battle. Increased, if it happens, it sort of happens and I have to just uh, get through whatever is coming my way. So it, it really depends on the player, I think. Uh, because everyone is different with, re with regards to the experience that they find the most engaging. I think event randomness is honestly fine i think some events need to be better designed but the current level of randomness for hunt and settlement events is fine the only randomness that is an issue in kingdom death is dice if you just keep rolling ones it's an issue that's the only in instance where the randomness is the issue everything else the events that are being randomized are the issue the things that you're pulling from that RNG pool are. I think it's a 100% a. It's not a design mistake. It is just kind of annoying or faulty design. 
And of course, the AI deck you can manipulate as well as the HL deck. Top decking, it's going to be there. It's part of the game. I don't think it's a bad design. That's just the game itself. And you learn how to work around it. Yeah. And if you want to take the risk, great. And if you don't, there's ways to prepare when you go out. Easy. Done. Would you recommend that someone who had a very bad first time play experience give the game a second chance knowing that all of these systems, all these random things are still going to happen? Do you still feel that it is well worth it to dive back into Kingdom Death? I personally think that this game is worth giving a shot just to get past, you know, a sense of progression. And then if you enjoy that, maybe look into homebrew or, your, you know, your own ways to kind of balance the randomness i know it's not your job some people are purists they want to stick to the rules but if you genuinely enjoy the showdowns and the progression of the game and just the gameplay loop of gearing up and fighting tougher showdowns then i think it's worth giving the game a shot and there are you know suggestions from the community on how you can help reduce the randomness without it feeling like you're cheating too much you know only draw from the settlement event deck once then reshuffle the community edition that's you know huge shout out to them they try to get rid of all the gotchas and balance the gears that are like a bit underpowered. It's worth giving it another shot, yeah, for sure. Learning that the first time, I remember playing with my buddy who backed Kingdom Death um, on the first Kickstarter. I missed it. I had to purchase it after. And he brought it over and he, 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 he explained the game to us. And I played it. I said, wow, I'm hooked. I needed to learn how to defeat this boss in a certain way and use strategy and placement and whatnot, that's why I fell in love with the game. So now I can't use that as, well, That that's a deterrent. Uh, only because I like that, right? I think there is another game, I'm, I'm going to bring it back to one of the games that you like, Robinson Crusoe. Oh, I love Robinson okay. Crusoe, yes. I had the most fun losing in that game the first time I played. <laughs> that I went out and said, oh, we got to get this game. Now, this is years ago. This is when we were first kind of getting back into the board games and, and trying different types. And there are games that are difficult that when you lose, I have fun doing. Not many. <laughs> Not many. And I will tell you this. There are certain parts of Kingdom Death in the beginning. Great. But when you're on year 22 and something happens, uh, it is not fun. Uh, but when you roll ones constantly... Uh, or you lose all your resources. People who watched my first campaign towards the end know, know what I'm talking uh, about. Oh, was that Dagobah? Mm-hmm, my Boba Fett. Boba. Boba Fett. Um, so there's ways of doing, like, mitigation and allowing you to um, kind of counter the randomness. And to a degree, absolutely. I think that's okay uh, and great, and you learn along the way, but that first encounter, you're not going to know. And... It just might not appeal to certain people, but I liked it just like how I liked Robinson Crusoe. You know, a, a first-time player or group's progression through Kingdom Death will always be shaped by the surprises that the game has in store for them. And persevering through th those surprises or uh, struggles, even when a, a, someone loses their favorite survivor, they're on their last legs watching as their settlement is careening towards uh, an inevitable ruin. It's still part of that fun of the game and yes it can be tough to watch your campaign hurdle towards an eventual game over but that's something even the most skilled veteran players have to deal with uh, we're just as surprised by lucky or unlucky circumstances as new players are as though they're not always brought about by our own hands the way that we react to them is perfectly within our our power to deal with kingdom death has just enough skill involved to keep players of all skill levels engaged and thinking about how their actions and strategies will affect them in the upcoming lantern years but it also still has just that amount of luck and that chance involved that keeps the excitement high that keeps the the the, the moments where you, you're riding on high and all of a sudden the floor gets pulled out from underneath you interesting rather than like aggravating or frustrating in a way that uh, detracts from the gameplay experience. New players, it's just something you kind of have to have to deal with and accept about the game too. That that sort those sort of moments will occur, and that to be able to push through them, equality you'll you'll need to uh, work on just as in, with your your gameplay skill as you kind of approach the game. If they really want to play and if they're 
truly curious enough to be like, I'm going to ask the community and see exactly what's the best way to kind of mitigate this part of the game that I just I don't agree with. It really makes it hard for me to continue playing. Say if it's like the trap, it's a it would be a limiting play style to go with. But if people really hated dealing with the trap, uh, just push to have a full full survivors with uh, all spears. That would allow them a greater uh, ability to mitigate the aspects of the game that they find um, so disagreeable. But again, that it's it really comes down to much this individual in question who wants to make the attempt to overcome the challenges that lay ahead because it, it is a game that is going to test you and it's going to not always play out in your favor. Ultimately lend itself towards the envisioned destination that Poots had for um, the individual who's taking part in the game. Though the end itself might be bittersweet. The, the narrative is there to kind of uh, whisk you upon this uh, bizarre and harrowing journey. I think definitely. I think there there's a lot to love. There's a lot of tactical stuff. Kind of mastering and learning the randomness is fun, and it does lead to kind of those fun peaks and valleys that do kind of keep you coming back. And it, it does help that the game is just so deep. There, there's, a, there's a lot to do and a lot to explore. It has a lot of luck and variance. But it also has a lot of skill expression and attracts a lot of people who really like that skill expression. Because there definitely is some fun to be had in both having ways to express your skill and knowledge of the game, but then also having to, to deal with some variance and randomness. And granted, I do think the variance and randomness in Kingdom Death does get a lot better once you know what to look for. So I think kind of once you get over that initial hump, and you can start enjoying the skill expression and that stuff. It's fun because of the exploration and the discovery. And so I like playing a fair where it's really kind of my metal and my knowledge and my ability to kind of figure out what the game wants me to do and then execute it that I really like. Um, so the king... Uh, the, the year 21 blind king fight is going to put that to the uh, absolute test because I'm going to be uh, going in not knowing what's uh, going on. And I uh, have a very limited amount of time in the showdown to figure out how I'm going to get out of it that I don't even care if it like just kind of wipes the floor with me because I kind of expect that. I'm a, a very big advocate of understanding the rules, know what they mean and know what they're probably telling you what to do. But then also at the end of the day, just kind of like do what will make give you a better experience. You know, if you're playing with a specific kind of group and you know what they want and uh, you go to draw the next settlement event and it's uh, it's murder again. And, you know, that's just kind of going to break everyone's heart. Uh, you know, just 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 put it under. Uh, heck, uh, one, one of the big things I, I do myself a lot is uh, I just ignore the hooded knight in almost all of my people with the lantern campaigns because it just annoys me so much. <laughs> Um, and uh, that's, that's obviously a pretty big house rule. I think it's very much worth it game to play because it has, I'm a very, very story focused person. I write stories. Haha. And I think the story that the game tells, the story that the world tells, and the story that you can tell through your survivors in that world, it's definitely worth it for the setting to go back in and try again. And it's way, really worth it to go back in with different, a different combination of expansions. If and when the chest comes out, that'll be the best time to pick it back up. The game is randomness. If you don't like randomness, this is not the game for you. Give it to a friend or sell it on eBay. That's, that's all there is to it. Pretty much, I mean, don't be mad at Poots for designing a random game don't buy it read the reviews watch the videos and get monopoly whoa although monopoly is random whoa. too isn't it i don't I know don't i'm trying it. to think of like and play scrabble i don't you know this is don't hate on kingdom death monster i i let's see okay um if i was going okay if it was Christmas time and I had to purchase a game for Corey for Christmas, 
and I read the reviews on this um, and watched videos um, to do some research, I wouldn't buy it because it isn't something that entices me, okay? But I have agreed to play this game, even hating the randomness, even hating the, um, the way you could wipe out your entire, entire settlement. I've agreed to play it. So I would tell somebody to, to give it another chance um, because it could be radically different mm. in your second chance. It's so random that you could have a completely uplifting, well, it's never going to be uplifting, but completely, completely different. Like, look at that. How many times have we started the campaign and, and once you've, we've completely been annihilated by the prologue lion? Right. It doesn't so happen that was your first all time. the time. Yeah. Right. It's going to be different. How many people in your settlement are going to be different? How many, you know, it... it and then with the expansions, on top of that, it's just going to be... Mm. Yeah. You know, so I... I and if you absolutely hate it, fine, hate it. But may, it's just not for you. I would say give it another chance and see. Did, okay. did I answer the question? <laughs> you answered the question, yes. So I did not agree with you in the beginning. And then I kind of did as you explained it. So oh, sorry. Okay. What? You don't have to apologize. Oh, okay. No. Sorry. You don't have to apologize again. <laughs> uh, what didn't you agree with? That people should. I'm just not sell going. It? I'm not going to pitch the game to somebody if they hated it the first time to say I think you should try it again. Oh no, I agree with you. Um, but I, I will explain, like you explained, by saying it's random and it could be completely different. I'm not going to try and convince that person to be okay with randomness because they could be on year 12 and completely die. They roll that one. They get pissed at the game. They hate the game. They hate me for bringing them in, hate me for all the time spent, and it's a stupid game. They should know up front. Basically, what I'm saying is they need to watch this video with everybody on this to listen to hear what they're about to embark in. And if they want to embrace it, they're going to really enjoy the game. And they're going to hate it at points, but they know what the game is about, and that's why they're playing. I'm not going to commit to my buddy who gets really mad at rolling a one because he's a bad dice roller. Okay? Yeah, I, yeah. There's I need to roll it because I'm better at rolling dice. Okay, that's what I'm dealing with here. <laughs> that he will get upset and angry and mad at the game and extreme. why is this game poorly designed, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing um, co-op with him in Elden Ring at the moment, and he hates why it's not fully co-op. And I, that's just not how the game's designed, and either you like it or you don't. I don't need to hear him yell and scream every time we get on, and he's got to drop a finger that I gotta find. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna convince somebody to play a game that's random if they don't like randomness. That's my answer. Now, there are things that you can do that I've heard. Right? Oh. Um, and like secret and the kingdom Well, that's not secret. Like it's not secret. But I will mention this. Hole? You know, oh, I, mean, I don't like web? the murder event. Oh, if I pull <laughs> it? Or why don't I just remove it from the deck? Yeah, see that reaction? That, that, that does not belong in this household. That's, that's cheating. Look, if you want to do it, that's absolutely okay. It's your game. I like well, that. It's no, your no, game. No. You, you know can what? It's your it. game. You can absolutely do it. Listen, not everybody who plays Kingdom of Death is at the level of game intensity that you are. Don't, 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 don't prop me up on a pedestal. There's so many other people probably in this video that have so much more knowledge. Well, I'm not saying that they don't. I'm not saying that they don't, but I'm saying for, you know, um, a random person that doesn't watch any, you know, doesn't watch any YouTube or doesn't want to look up any, you know, on the forums that, that wants to make it a little bit easier for their wife, 
who doesn't like. So they're like, okay, honey, I'll take out the murder. Will you play now? Sure, sure. 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 Um, Or for that friend who gets angry. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's his, you know, that's his sure. group of friends. Okay, I, he wants to play the game so badly that he will, you know, slightly alter it because it's a little bit too hard. If you want to play the game, absolutely. I think that's why. I don't think you would be going through all the trouble of getting it and reading all the rules and understanding all the complexities if you were going to do that. But if you do, that's okay because... I could see that you have it and you really want to get to the end game. You've never been able to get to the end game because of the roles, because of the cards, a combination of both. And, you know, you're tired of playing the same prologue lion over and over. If you want to experience it, get to the end, absolutely. You can set that game difficulty to storytelling mode. Okay, well, it's not that dramatic, taking out murder. Would not be setting it to story. I mean, You can do on. it. You can do it. Absolutely. It's your game. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, we're not going to hate. Okay, so to close it out, there's actually one thing I did want to mention in case Poots does ever watch this. Oh, he's just going to fast forward over us. He's not going to. Here's the only thing that I want to, I don't know, why, this doesn't even make sense to put it right here, but because I've got a different audience, um... The only thing that I do not like about Kingdom Death Monster is that it doesn't come with card covers, and I put my greasy fingers all over the. Card. No, stop it! I don't. I don't card protect my cards. I know. I know. Okay. I was just trying to think of something that you wouldn't like. The at the end of the campaign, end of however many hours, multiple oh, yeah. hours you play. Oh yeah! Oh, oh, I'm not going to give the ending away, but the ending is. Eight, eight sentences? Can you give me um, uh, a page of text? Can that page of text be another random ending? Depending on how well we did or where we ended, can I roll a die and get one of ten different endings? Or, or wow. uh, just some, it's just the same block of text if you win and a separate five sentences if we lose. I've never heard this side. Let of me you. roll a die. Let me do something. Let it. Let it be. You know, uh, if you survive with ten people or more, you get this. If you like, it seems like there was so much thought in all the items and events and different buff settlements and all this to do this random story that you could all, that you can encounter. Like you said, you could play twenty times and have random all new things you never experienced before. But the same eight sentences at the end of a campaign. Well, maybe it's because he's only expecting people to complete it once in that is their the lifetime. One, that's the one thing that I really hope changes in the next batch of Kingdom Death that comes out in 2034, whenever we actually receive it. I want to see the ending. Whoa, Poots is never going to talk to us now. Well, you know what? Uh, that's fine. Okay. Wow, I didn't know you had so much anger about that. And I wonder if you've ever mentioned that to me before and I just completely forgot. You're going to have to enjoy the journey. Otherwise, it's probably not going to be the best game for you. If it's just like bits of randomness and you're willing to bend the rules or patch up the worst parts, ask for what the most common gotcha moments are. Or like for spoiler-free tips, you could draw from the settlement de- event deck without replacement. You could add in at least maybe like the community edition settlement event changes. Those just make it so that you can play around them a little bit more, which helps a lot. Even if you draw murder multiple times in a row, you can actually play around it in community edition. And it's not game ender that it really could be in other campaigns. It presents an interesting choice as opposed to a uh, you get stabbed in the face moment. If you're willing to bend the rules a bit, that there's some rough patches that can easily be smoothed out with Community Edition and all. Community Edition has been mentioned throughout this video. I'm going to let Wayforger explain exactly what is Community Edition and how you can find it on the Lantern's Rain Discord. At this point, it's now the 1.6 Community Edition cha- uh, Community Edition version of Kingdom Death. It is a project that was created and designed by members of the Lantern's Rain uh, Kingdom Death Discord for the express purpose of rebalancing existing elements in the game to allow players to have more options 
without undermining the, the game's core design and challenge. We worked alongside members of the Greater Kingdom Death community to develop a more, more nuanced gaming experience, one that would incorporate smart fixes for artific artificial difficulty gotchas and lackluster gear, add additional changes to innovations to make there be a greater um, dichotomy in what choices players have available to them. We wanted to combat the dichotomy, the dichotomy between monsters worthwhile meta content and the gear and proficiencies that needed to have something more to them, or at least through extended play experience, what we felt might need something more to them. A lot of the additions we made to the game of changes were all very carefully considered and play tested with each of these updates. And as we kind of moved forward and continued lead play tested, we were open to like doing different updates and, and making sure that underwhelming, overpowered, or generally lacking play aspects, whether it be from gear to settlement events and more, to be at least more enjoyable to to, to work with. Updated general game rules like um, how paired weapons work, how frail and broken weapons are. Uh, we worked on proficiencies like dagger proficiency, whip proficiency. We worked to make cannibalize something uh, as a, a death principle that would actually be worth using in comparison to graves where graves kind of dominates the current uh gameplay scene because of how many endeavors it gives to your settlement to be able to um grow out of the losses that you experience update a collective toil so that it would uh, be re redesigned to give players greater control over their endeavors increase the overall usability of the endeavors during the the um settlement phase changes to protect the young to incorporate rerolls uh, into that as well, so that it, it would be something worth worth choosing in comparison to um, Survival of the Fittest, which offers newborns and current survivors both incredible stat bonuses as well as the fact that they're able to reroll King's Curse and even the hand, the the hand, the Battle of the Hand, more of a um, more of a rewarding experience for players to actually attempt to succeed and uh, incorporate into their, their campaigns. Or we uh, actually developed our own version of our own armor set bonus, or our, our own armor set for the Kingsman armor. We actually even added um, an, an ending to, or an introductory ending event for uh, the Gold Smoke Knight. The great thing about uh, the Community Edition is it's all modular. Anything that you don't like or you don't think it, it vibes with you is not something that you don't you have to include. All the changes we've uh, worked on are, are changes that you can pick and choose from. You don't have to be feel that you are slotted into using everything from the community edition. It's more of a you look through the different changes and see what really speaks to you, and from there you're able to uh, make your own decisions decisions about what you want to add. So there was all their opinions. <laughs> I agree with a large majority of them, um, es especially the um, ones about Community Edition. I would highly suggest if you've experienced Kingdom Death and you hate rolling ones and you hate top decking from the settlement events, you should just, one, look to Community Edition. Community Edition is, is great. Uh, or two, just don't worry about it. Just take those events out and just say it never happened. Um, I fully agree, King of Death is well worth the experience, playing through it, regardless if you want to cheat a little bit. So, um, normally I would do an outro, but someone else is going to do the outro for this video for me. So, thank you very much, and I'll leave it up to them. Great game. Yeah. Don't mind the difficulty. That's what, uh, that's what intrigued me from the beginning, and I hope everyone goes out there and keeps continuing, keeps playing it. We're definitely looking forward to the new items or the new campaigns to come out. I'm really interested in the campaigns that are about five or six years long. Like the, the whole thing is five or six years. That's really great because that's even perfect for doing um, videos. Uh, we are in here seven or eight of our current one, I which we haven't played in three oh, years oh, in a while. So a year maybe. It's tough. I'm looking forward to, to that. Um, thanks a lot for uh, Brahmithra to reach out to us and having us be a part of this episode. I hope and we discussion. didn't ruin your video. <laughs>
Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and you can check us out on our YouTube channel, Hit Points Gaming, when we finally get around to playing some more Kingdom Death Monster.